Hello friends, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Why don't you go down and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any episodes. For my fans and subscribers, welcome back. I really, really do appreciate you. Today's topic is the Satanic Panic Down Under. Almost through with this series. Nothing else I need to say. Let's get on with the video. In the time before internet, Australia suffered from scandal line. While both sides of the Atlantic were dealing with the SRA controversy, it took a bit longer to make it to Australia. The SRA scandal was introduced to Australia in 1990 in a TV special by a 60 Minutes journalist. This special was based, sometimes verbatim, on the Gerardo Rivera special, Double Worship Exposing Satan's Underground, which aired in the United States in 1988. Following the European and North American template, professional networks grew up around SRA. The Royal North Shore Hospital in Sydney hosted a seminar in 1991 with reputable medical and mental health professionals attending. It wasn't until 1997 and the New South Wales Police Service's final report that an official rejection of SRA appeared in Australia. Although dismissing outright reports of satanic criminal conspiracies, the author did list reasons why the panic started so readily. Australia's panic, like the panic in America, have foundations that were laid decades earlier, although they were different. It began with a media circus surrounding a self-proclaimed white witch named Rosaline Norton. White witches are those who only use good magic. That is going to take an entire episode in and of itself. So I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty here. I do plan on doing a series on witchcraft. I know about white magic, but I know nothing about black or evil magic. Satanic cult practices had a prominent role in two popular TV series. Homicide from 1964 to 1977 and number 96 from 1972 to 1977. They also appeared in classics such as Australia After Dark, 1975. Before going any further, I want to stress that organized Satanism, such as the Church of Satan, does not advocate violence. Now, Going back to the TV shows, this set the stage and provided context for the ensuing panic. Perhaps not surprisingly, the long history of fear and suspicion accompanying occult practices such as witchcraft, which is different from Satanism, also had a strong influence in Australia. However, due to the cultural history of this country, the panic manifested old colonial fears about the outback. For Australians, Rosalie Norton, also known as Witch of King's Cross, embodied the threat of occultism. She was born in New Zealand, but moved to Sydney with her family when she was eight. She was later expelled from school at the age of 14 due to her interest in the supernatural. 
Norton was an artist who looked to pagan and medieval art for inspiration. Her exhibition in 1949 at the University of Melbourne experienced a police raid and had four works removed. This had as much to do with its sexual content as occult content because at the time Australia was mostly secular. Norton conducted several rituals with people such as the conductor of the Sydney Symphony Orchestra, Sir Eugene Goosens. Australian customs confiscated occult objects from Goosens luggage in 1956, which led to, among other things, him losing his job. In 1950s Australia, this was a huge scandal. Norton played a central role in Goosen's fall from grace and would continue to be linked to scandals of this sort. To make a long story short, Norton was charged with obscenity and forced to defend her pagan beliefs as well as to explain how they differed from Satanism. After a two-year trial, she and her lover Greenless were fined 25 pounds each. Norton was exhausted as a result of the trial, but for Greenless, the aftermath was more devastating. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia and lived the rest of his life in an institution. She died in 1979 in poverty, but the mid-1980s brought renewed interest in her. Interest in the occult rose in the 1970s, mainly fueled by international hits like Rosemary's Baby, 1968, and The Exorcist, 1973. By the time Michelle Remembers was published and the McMartin preschool trial began in the 1980s in the U.S., the cultural foundations had already been laid in Australia for a satanic panic. The Occult Experience, a documentary that aired in 1985, explored various occult-related practices such as shamanism in an attempt to de-demonize them. Ironically, this documentary was one of a number of factors that paved the way for the satanic panic in Australia. In the late 1980s, an ex-policeman who fancied himself an occult expert called David Linton appeared in newspapers with tales of increasing devil worship in Australia. However, the satanic ritual abuse component took years to develop, unlike in America. The Australian version of the panic was directly affected by so-called experts from the United States. Sydney hosted Australia's largest child abuse conference in August 1986, including investigators in the McMartin case, such as Key McFarland. Many professionals were convinced by the arguments presented. Australia had its own version of the McMartin preschool trial, known as the Mr. Bubbles case. After the clown that Anthony Darren dressed up as. Anthony and Dawn Darren ran a private kindergarten in suburban Monavale, and a mother of the kids suspected her daughter had been sexually abused. She reported her suspicions to the police, and in 1989, the Darrens were charged with over 50 sexual assaults and 17 abductions. Claims of interference during questioning of the children forced Judge David Hyde to declare in late 1989 
that the witnesses have been contaminated and he threw out the case. Well, friends, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, press the subscribe button, and if you want to know when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. My Twitter, Discord, email, and PayPal links are in the description, along with the source that I used for this episode. If you wish to contact me, you can do it through my Twitter or email. If you would, please leave comments in the comment section. Not only do I love hearing from you, but it also triggers the YouTube algorithm. If you have any requests, you can leave those down there as well. Keep learning and searching for truth. Here are a few videos from my library. If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until next time, friends. Stay safe and goodbye.